precise um, bright line thing there. And it obviously, uh, obviously, if you say that we should just get rid of everything altogether and let people have, you know, everybody have their own nuclear bombs and stuff like that, and, um, and let people solve things by themselves, that's obviously not the right, the right answer either. Uh, I think that uh, something like um, a state about, you know, a government that has that spends maybe 10 to 15 percent of GDP is about the right number. So, um, you know, and I, I, I think we can have political debates as to where that money best be spent. Um, countries like Hong Kong, um, you know, a number of the emerging market countries have done really well, seem to have uh, been stable. They've had institutions that, you know, have protected people from crime and have protected property rights and have, you know, they've, they've not been completely chaotic, unstable places. Um, and they've achieved tremendous uh, rates of growth. And I think I think one of the you know, one of the perspectives that's always very important is a long time horizon, because uh, I think you know one of these debates is always that on a, on a short time horizon, of course, you get all sorts of different priorities. But if the question is how do we create the best world in the next fifty years, the next hundred years, or or beyond, um, I think you get to very different answers from uh, if you ask what do we do that's the best for the next two years, the next four. You know, the next political election cycle. Obviously, there's a very significant tension, um, and the security problem, you know, is a difficult one for libertarians to, to tackle. I mean, it's probably this, you know, children are a problem for libertarians, crazy people are a problem for libertarians, and you know, criminals are a problem. And I would consider, you know, terrorists are sort of a probably a subset of uh, crazy people and, and and criminals at the same time. Um, but but that. Uh, but that being said, I, I do think that um, there, there, there should be ways to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to address this. There, there's obviously, um, there's, there's one set of arguments, um, and I wouldn't say this is a panacea at all, but there is definitely a one, one line of analysis that, uh, that, it is, um, that terrorism tends to arise most in parts of the world that are very disconnected from the rest, and so that... Uh, if we have a more connected world in which people feel they have a stake in um, what happens in different places in different countries, that will create some, you know, some some incentives to uh, to basically um, um, to, to, that, that will mitigate against against sort of um, the kind of runaway hostility that, uh, that that is very very dangerous. I don't think that's a panacea, but I think that certainly is a partial thing. So I think globalization. Um, is not the whole answer, but it is probably a partial answer to some of the things that are that are driving um, driving things towards towards terrorism. And then, of course, you know, I do think there are you know, there are pieces of it that could be dealt with in a variety of ways. So, you know, I think um, if you could reduce the energy dependency um, in the U.S., this would be a very important step in in uh, in effect defunding a lot of the terrorist organizations. Um, if you could, um, you know, there probably are a whole set of security measures one could take um, that. Uh, don't necessarily are not necessarily incompatible with uh, with globalization.